All right, so let's take you back to geometry. Um, if you're given a triangle ABC, they want you to find B if A is 25 degrees and C is 30 degrees. So in geometry, we learned that the sum of the angles in a triangle is always 180 degrees. So we know that angle A plus angle B plus angle C should add to be 180 degrees. Well, we know angle A and angle C, angle A is 25, and angle B, I'm just going to call it B, <laughs> and C is 30 degrees. We want to know what B is. Well, it's whatever's left over to get us to 180. So you can set it up formally like this. Um, combine your like terms. So 25 plus 30 is 55. And then uh, subtract 55 from both sides to find B. Now, inevitably, students come up with <laughs> shortcuts to solve these uh, more basic ones, but that would be the more formal way of solving it. Again, the three angles add to be 180, so you set them up that way, and you solve for your missing angle. Okay. Now, what's going to happen is the questions are going to get a little more complex, but you're going to use the same property. Um, we still have triangle ABC. We're still asked to find angle B. This time, we know that A is 36 degrees. B is 4 alpha. That's called alpha, that symbol there. And C is 2 alpha. Um, so it's not quite as straightforward as the last one, but we start the same way. We know that the three angles in a triangle should be a sum of 180 degrees. So if we substitute the values we have, we know A is 36, so we have 36 plus angle B is 4 alpha. You can just use an A there if you want for those if you're not keen on writing alpha symbols. Uh, C is 2 alpha, again they add to be 180. We combine any like terms on this left side, so 4 alpha and 2 alpha would give us 6 alpha. And we want to solve for alpha first, and then we'll be able to find what they were looking for. Uh, we would need to subtract 36 from both sides of my equation. Oh, 180 minus 36 leaves me with 144. And then I divide both sides by 6. Now then you want to think carefully. So I know that alpha is 24, but is that what I was asked to find? Am I done? Uh, no, I was asked to find B. So now I'm going to go back and I know that B was 4 times alpha. We did have to find alpha first. We didn't waste our time. We're just going to substitute in what we know alpha is 24. So B would be 4 times 24, which is 96. Okay, so angle B is 96 degrees. If they ask for angle C, we could do the same thing. Put our alpha in as 24 and use it to find our C. Okay, this one takes another step. Um, we have triangle ABC. Once again, we're dealing with a triangle. C is a right angle. Um, we we're asked to find A and B if A is alpha and B is 5 alpha. Well, C is a right angle. What does that mean for its measure? Uh, well, right angles have a measure of 90 degrees. So again, we know that A, B, and C together should have a sum of 180 because they're the three angles in a triangle. Um, angle A is alpha, angle B is 5 alpha, and angle C is 90. Combine our like terms, so our alphas here, we have 1 and 5 gives us 6 alpha again plus 90 is 180. We would want to solve this. We're going to subtract 90 from both sides of the equation. And we get 6 alpha equals 90. All that's left here to finish to find alpha is to divide both sides by 6. Okay, so we take 90 divided by 6 and we get that alpha is 15. Okay. Then you want to double check. Now, what were you asked to find? We were asked to find both A and B. So we need to find both of those. Well, if we go up here, A was alpha. So A is just 15 because that's what alpha was. B is 5 times alpha, 
So B is 5 times that 15 that we found, which gives us 75. Okay, so we did what we were supposed to. We found A and B. All right, now we're taking it once again <laughs> up one more notch. Okay, similar setup to the last one. We still have a right triangle. Um, C is a right angle, so again, that means that C will be a 90 degree angle. We're asked to find A and B, but this time A is alpha and B is alpha squared. Okay, we, we start the same way. Again, we know A plus B plus C should equal 180. We put in our values. A is alpha, B was alpha squared, C was 90. That equals 180. Now, alpha, you're treating it just like an x, like any other variable here. All right, so notice we have a little different situation here. Um, in our past problems, we combined our like terms. Um, here, we don't have any like terms on this left-hand side. And then we tried to isolate the alpha. But here, since we have an alpha squared and an alpha, that means we're going to have to solve this differently. We're going to have to first get everything equal to 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract this 180 over. And the key was that I had an alpha squared and an alpha, so I knew I had to use something different than just trying to isolate alpha. Okay. Also, I'm going to write these in order. I'm going to put the alpha squared first and the alpha second, because that's the way we're used to seeing quadratic um, functions. At 90 minus 180 is negative 90. So now I have this alpha squared plus alpha minus 90 equals 0. Again, these are just as if you had x's. Now, if we had x's there, what would we do? We would try to factor this. We can either factor or use the quadratic formula to solve. Um, if it factors, that's the preferable way, if it factors easily, and this does. Remember, when you're trying to factor a problem like this, you want that number on the end, two numbers that multiply to equal it, but add to equal the number in the middle, 1. So what are factors of 90? Well, there's 1 and 90, 2 times 45, 3 and 30. Um, Six and fifteen, nine times ten. Hey, look at that. If I had a negative nine and a positive ten, they would multiply to be negative ninety like I wanted and add to be a positive one like I wanted. So my factors that I'm using are negative nine and positive ten. So my two factors are alpha minus nine and alpha plus ten. The next step when you're solving something like this is to set each of those factors equal to 0 and solve them both. So we have alpha minus 9 equals 0. If we solve that for alpha, we get alpha equals 9. And we have alpha minus 10 from both sides here. We get alpha equals negative 10. So we got two solutions here. Alpha is 9 and alpha is negative 10. But see, the issue here is that... We can't have a negative. You can't have a negative angle measure inside a triangle. So we know this cannot be a solution. So our solution here is that alpha is 9, but we're not done yet. <laughs> we have to go back and say what is A and B, because that's what they actually asked for. So A is equal to, well, it said A was equal to alpha, and we just found that alpha is 9. So A is 9 degrees. And B is supposed to be alpha squared. So B would be 9 squared. That was our alpha. 9 squared, 9 times 9 is 81. So B is 81 degrees. So we have a triangle with angles A, 9 degrees, B, 81 degrees, and C, 90 degrees. So notice we started with the same method, but depending on what you come out with here, you may have to use different strategies to solve. That brings us to our last example. Um, this is supposed to be a triangle shape here. Okay, It says, once again, we have right triangle ABC. C is a right angle. So again, we know that C is a 90 degree angle. Uh, find A and B if A is alpha and B is 3 over alpha. Oh, man. Fractions. <laughs> 
So we get A plus B plus C is 180 once again. We sub in our values. A is alpha, B is 3 over alpha, C is 90, and those add to be 180. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try to work this through. Um, there's a couple ways you could go about this. Here, I want to kind of eliminate the fact that I have a fraction there. So what I'm going to do is subtract 90 to move it to the other side. I have alpha plus 3 over alpha equals 90. Okay. Now where you go from here is really kind of up to you. Um, one thing we could do is get a common denominator and add these two together on the left hand side. Um, the other thing we could do is move this over and use cross multiplication. Um, either of those will work. I'm going to go ahead to practice my fractions. I'm going to get a common denominator here so I can add these. Um, if we want alpha in the bottom here, we'd have to multiply by alpha. Whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So now I have alpha squared over alpha plus 3 over alpha equals 90. Now these have a common denominator, so I can add them together. And I get alpha squared plus 3 over alpha equals 90. Now to get rid of this alpha in the bottom, now that I have a single fraction here, if I multiply by alpha, that will cancel. Whatever I do on one side, I have to do the same on the opposite side. So I do that, and I get alpha squared plus 3 is equal to 90 alpha. And now look, we're kind of in a similar situation that we were on our previous problem. We have uh, alpha squared and an alpha, which means we're going to have to use factoring or the quadratic formula to find our solution here. So we need to get this equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract this 90 alpha from both sides so that I have 0 on one side and everything else on the other because that's how you have to set it up if you're going to use those methods. Okay, I notice also I, I can choose what order to put it in, and so I put it in our typical order, squared, alpha, and then constant. We would try to factor this, but there are no factors of 3 that add to be negative 90. So our other option, if you are not able to factor, is to use the quadratic formula. I'm going to bring my, my value up here, and we're going to do the quadratic formula. I remember the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a, where a is the, co the coefficient here, b is the coefficient here, and c is the coefficient here. Those should, this should be somewhat review for you. Okay, so my b is negative 90. So I have negative of negative 90 plus or minus the square root of b squared. So my negative 90 squared. Minus 4 times the a is the number in front was just 1, times c, that number on the end, was 3 all over 2 times my leading coefficient, 1. All right, now we need to simplify. Um, go carefully here. First of all, negative negative makes that a positive 90, plus or minus the square root of uh, 9, negative 90 squared. 90 times 90 is 8,100. To save room, I'm just going to do that, these two up above there. And here, 4 times 1 times 3 is 12. Negative 4 times 1 times 3 is negative 12. So 8,100 minus 12 gives me 8,088. And that's all over 2. So I have now to take the square root of 8,088. And I'm going to round it off a bit. Um, I get 89.9333. If you want an exact answer, we would leave it that way. But they're wanting um, a more definite answer here. Okay, divided by 2. The plus or minus means I get two answers here. Whatever 90 plus 89.9333 divided by 2 is. Okay, so let's do that one first. So we go 90 plus 
9333, divide it by 2, and you get 89.96665. The other answer is going to be with subtraction, so it would be 90 minus that 89.9333, divided by 2. So let's do that one, 90 minus 89.9333 equals and then divide by 2 and you get point zero zero not zero point zero three 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 five so here are my two solutions for alpha now remember a and b a was alpha and b was 3 over alpha so what we get is notice if we say for example let's say that a is the 89.96665, okay, that would make B 3 divided by that number. Which comes out to point zero zero three 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 five, which was our other solution. And it really could go either way if you